Hi folks, uh, this uh, calculus lesson is on continuity and one-sided limits. This is part one, you guys. Part two is really fast. It's on the intermediate value theorem we'll talk about in the next lesson. Okay, so part one. Um, limits are y value answers. Continuity is an x answer or an x interval. One-sided limits usually involve uh, square roots or cube roots or piecewise functions. Uh, and um, if you don't see a plus or a minus, you know, when it says as x approaches your c, which explains, you know, you're coming from the left to the right, or you're coming from the right and going to the left, then you assume it's on uh, both sides, okay? So you assume you're coming at both sides, uh, from the left to the right and the right to the left. So if if uh, the limit of f of x is x approaches c, this is from the left, coming from the left to the right, that's what this little minus sign says. If it equals some number l, and if it is coming from the right, that's what this plus sign is, it also equals the same number L, then the limit is going to be L, as long as it approaches the same number on both sides right there. All right, so find each limit. Okay, so uh, this is A, B, and C, and they're all dealing with this. F of X of equals the square root of 4 minus X squared. Okay, so here I'm going to find uh, the limit of F of X as we approach negative 2 from the right. Well, negative 2 from the right means it's going to be bigger than negative 2. Well, remember, negatives kind of work backwards, so I'm thinking of a number like negative 1.99, something like that. So I'm going to plug in negative 1.99 right there. When I do that, I get um, a really small number. So when I square that, that's almost 2, but it's less than 2. So when I square that, it's just going to be a little bit less than 4. So it's going to be the square root of some small number, which is 0. I can get even closer to 1 point, or to, to 2, you guys. I can make a 1.99999, you know, and it's going to make this even closer to 4, but less than 4. Okay, and then when I approach uh, negative 2 from the from the left, you guys, I'm thinking of like negative 2.01. And when I square negative 2.01, all of a sudden it gives me something bigger than 4. So 4 minus something bigger is going to get me a negative number. And I can't square root a negative number, at least for limit numbers, you guys. So um, uh, the, the, this one doesn't exist. So therefore, if it equals 0 coming from the right, and if it doesn't exist coming from the left, these are not the same answer. So the answer is going to be it does not exist. All right, if I graph that, you guys, this is just a half of a circle. Think of this as y equals the square root of this. So if I square both sides, I get this. And then if I add x squared to both sides, that's an equation of a circle right there. Remember that from pre-calculus? Okay, an equation of a circle that has radius 2 would be this. And since there's no plus or minus here, it's just the plus side, so it's just the top half. Look, when I approach 2 from the left, it's not even on the graph. It doesn't exist. When I approach 2 from the right, I'm sorry, when I approach 2 from the right, it's coming down here. Remember, my limit is a y answer, so when I'm approaching it from the right, it equals um, 0. It's a y answer. It's going to equal 0. But on the left, it doesn't even hit the graph. Okay, on this one here, here's a piecewise function. I'm going to graph each piece. This is a line. This is y equals 3 minus x. This is y equals 4. That's just a point. This is a, a parabola, x squared plus 1. So when I graph all those three right there, Okay, so here's uh, the line. I did that in blue right there. Here's the, the parabola. I did that in red. And the point I did right there. So check it out. When I let x come from the left, the graph is coming down this blue guy. And I can get infinitely close to, infinitely close to. Remember, limit's a y answer. So my y is this one right here, y equals 2. When I approach uh, uh, 1 from the, the right-hand side, coming down this graph, coming down this graph, it's also approaching 2. So since they both approach 2 on both sides, then the limit's going to be equal to 2. Even though at 2, it's not the same. It's equal to 4. But as you approach it, it's, I can get infinitely close to, and if it's not close enough, get infinitely more closer. They're both getting close to 2, so the limit's going to be equal to 2. Okay? All right, so um, continuous functions uh, means no jumps, okay? So uh, types of discontinuity, these are called removable discontinuity when there's a hole, but they keep going, you guys. These are non-removable discontinuous right here, okay, where they make jumps, okay? They make jumps or they're asymptotes. See, here's removable discontinuity, okay? Uh, and then this is non-removable where they jump, okay? Uh, so look at the last piecewise function that we just did in number two. Okay, what kind was that? Was that uh, non-removable or removable? Well, that was definitely a removable. There's that graph right there. Okay, so um, it didn't jump or anything. It just, it was, you know, they're all connected there, so removable. And not all piecewise function are discontinuous. Here's an example of two lines, and it looks like a parabola there. Um, and they, they, that is a continuous function right there. 
All right, so with the graph, give the limits and describe the continuity. Okay, so here's the graph right here. This kind of looks like a sine curve, maybe a cosine curve, a sine curve with a phase shift, I guess, amplitude of 2. Okay, so um, the limit as x approaches c and c is negative 2. Okay, so as x approaches negative 2, when I approach negative 2 from the left, it's coming down, it's coming down, it's approaching right there at y equals negative 2. When I approach it from the right, it's coming down, it's also y equals negative 2. So the limits are y answers, so the answer is going to be negative 2. And, the, and you can also say it's continuous everywhere. Um, uh, your book might say it's continuous. I don't know what your book says. It's, it just depends on the book. So might say it's continuous on the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. I don't know. They're both the same. Okay, so <clears throat> here's number two with this graph. Okay, as x approaches negative two. Okay, when I approach negative two from the left, I'm going up this side. It's approaching y equals, looks like positive two right there. And same on this side, y equals positive two. So the answer is going to be two. Okay, and this one has removable discontinuity. Your book might say continuous on the intervals from negative infinity to uh, x equals negative 2, and then from negative 2 to x equals positive infinity. Okay? So, uh, what about this one? What's the limit on this guy? Well, this one, there is no limit because it jumps. It's a ju jump discontinuity, which is a removal, non removable discontinuous. Okay? Your book might say it's not continuous at x equals negative 1, but the limit on this, it doesn't exist. Find each limit here. Okay, so here, if I plugged in 4 right here, um, it just substitute in 4, I get 0 on the bottom. Well, that doesn't work, you guys. So um, it's important to, to notice there is a domain issue. First of all, x can't equal 4 because it gets me 0 on the bottom. And x has to be positive. It could be 0, but since I'm square rooting it, then this guy has to be greater than or equal to 0. So I have a domain issue. Okay, so if my limit came up and it fell into one of those domain issues, I, I would have some trouble. I'd say it, wouldn't, it didn't exist. And here's an unfair trick that you probably hadn't seen yet. Um, x minus 4, check out this denominator. X minus 4 is actually uh, the difference of squares, but your squares are, um, your conjugates are the square root of x minus 2 and the square root of x plus 2. If I foil these guys out, I get me x minus 4. So I'm going to replace this x minus 4 with this stuff right here. And then the x minus to the root x minus 2s are going to cancel. And I'm left with 1 over root x uh, plus 2. Now you can sub in 4 and you get 1 fourth on that guy. Pretty tricky, huh? Dirty trick. Okay, here's one here. This is a parabola. You remember how to find a vertex? X equals opposite B over 2A. So opposite negative 4 would be 4 over 2 times 1. Is So X would be uh, 2. Plugged in 2 right there. And uh, at least it'll give me the vertex of that. So here's this one here. This one's going up because it's positive. This one's going down because it's negative. They have the same vertex except this one goes down. And so this hole is being included at X equals 2. This hole is not being included, so when I combine those two graphs, it uh, gives me that right there. That's pretty neat, huh? Okay, so the limit's going to be 2, because when I approach uh, uh, x equals 2 from the left, it's coming down, and when it gets me down here at 2. When I approach it from the right, it's going up. It gets me up here at 2. It's the same value, so it equals 2. All right, so describe the uh, continuity on the closed interval. Okay, this one I plugged into the graphing calculator, and it gives me a graph like that right there. So you can say it's, uh, it's discontinuous uh, uh, at x uh, equals plus or minus 2 right there. Uh, your book might say it's continuous at x equals, uh, except it's continuous everywhere except at x equals plus or minus 2. But that's too much information because they want us to include it on this interval from negative 1 to 2. So from here to here, it's continuous from here, and it goes down and goes down and goes down. So this says it's continuous on the closed interval from negative 1 to the open-ended side 2, which means I'm not including 2, but I'm including negative 1 right there. All right, now if you're in my uh, calculus class, I would assign that as your homework out of the Larson book.